Yeah, um, that's great. Cool. Um, all right. So we are we are at six thirty here. Um, so I will go ahead and get things underway. Um, people are still coming in, but we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so for those of you who are tuning in to this webinar for the first time, uh, my name is Spencer. I am the marketing specialist for Voces Digital. This is our third Wednesday weekly webinar series, which is kind of a mouthful, but we've been doing them every Wednesday. And uh, just uh, keep it. We're tonight. We'll have Kara Jacobs, and I'll introduce her in a minute. Um, but uh, we, we're doing these every Wednesday through the end of the school year. We'll be talking about topics related to VOSES, related to CI, and other things that we know our teachers love to get together and learn and chat about. Um, so uh, feel free to tune in uh, next week and the week after, too. So um, without further ado, I'll, I'll introduce Kara. Uh, so Kara is a Spanish teacher, language consultant, author. Um, she's contributed to VOSES on several of our titles, including No Way Story at 3-4 and our AP title, Aprender y Preparar. Um, Kara, I'll uh, give you the floor. She's gonna be talking about uh, using the series Go, Vive a tu manera. And uh, thanks for thanks for being here with us. Great. All right, thank you, Spencer, and welcome everyone. All right, um, just a little bit about my myself here. So um, Kara Jacobs, I'm originally from Massachusetts. I live in New Hampshire now. I'm married to a teacher, a math teacher. Um, I have two sons. I've been teaching for over 20 years and I used to use realidades when I first started. So I did that kind of that traditional uh, teaching the way that I learned with vocab and grammar and a vocab quiz and a grammar quiz and then a test. And I've really switched uh, over the last 10 years to using um, being more of an acquisition driven classroom and, and using CI. Uh, I have a blog, it's called Comprehensifying and Extending Authentic Resources. And that's where I share a lot of things. And that's how um, I kind of got into um, helping with the Nuestra Historia. And I teach or I have taught Spanish one through AP. So the last three years I've taught all the levels, one, two, three, four, five AP. And then we even have a class that students can take after AP. So I have um, experience with all the levels and my high school is a public high school in rural New Hampshire. It's really diverse socioeconomically. Um, and then as Spencer said, I'm a contributor to the Nuestra Historia four book and then the Aprender y Preparar, I did a lot of work on that. So tonight we're going to talk about um, using TV series or Netflix series. TV is kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm dated, dating myself by saying TV or series, but a series. So I'm going to talk about why you would use a series, what series you could use. There's a few out there, but obviously we're going to talk about Go, We Got to Manera, because it's all set and in, um, in the Nuestra Historia titles. And I think Spencer, is it in all, it's not just the Nuestra Historia titles, it is, is it in the other, like I know there's another Spanish in Voces, like the other, is it in there too? Um, off the top of my head, I think it's just in Nuestra Historia. I don't think okay. we have it in our introductory titles, but let me, I can check that out and okay. clarify in the chat. Okay. Um, and then I'll talk, so I'll talk about when and where to use a series and then how to. So I've been using TV series in my classroom for, or, yeah, TV series for a long time. And when I found Go, um, I was really excited because it's totally appropriate, which I'll talk about that in a moment. But first, uh, something that's really important when using TV series is the input and the language acquisition does not come from what students watch and from the subtitles and what they hear because it's so over their heads, especially in level one. So the language, the input and the language acquisition comes from what the teacher does before, during, and after the watching. So I'm gonna share with you all the different activities that, that we've created myself and actually my colleague, um, Elisa Kinatoa helps with, um, we kind of work together. She did the novice and I did the intermediate. So it's not really them watching. That's not where um, things, are, things are really happening for them language wise. So I have several, I have eight reasons here. I'll go through them quickly, but why to use a TV series? So it's highly engaging for our Generation Z students. There's a great podcast here. Highly recommend it. it talks about how these students are super visual um, with, with videos and with images, really important for them and their learning. It's just how they live their daily lives. Also, it creates class culture and connections, right? So I don't know if anyone watches any of these shows. But some people, like even students, I did an interview today with a student and a student watches Schitt's Creek, which is a great um, show and we just immediately connected. So if you're all watching a TV series throughout the semester or throughout the year, you're really going to be, you have this 
the little class culture of who you who you like, the characters and who you don't like, or you can't believe something's happening or you're singing when it comes to go. So it's a great way to create class culture. Uh, reason number three, it's an authentic resource. So you have culture just automatically embedded. You have the products, the perspectives and the, per and, uh, the practices or products, practices, perspectives. It builds confidence because eventually as you go on through the semester, right now in my, my upper level class, I'm not using Go because they've seen it before. So I'm using another um, series and it's amazing to see how much confidence they're getting when they can finally understand it because at the beginning they feel a little like they're drowning. But to be able to understand authentic Spanish for them, um, especially my students, they don't hear it in their daily lives and where we live, there's not a lot of Spanish in our daily lives outside of school. So that's great to build confidence. Uh, number five, it's automatic differentiation. I love this. As I mentioned, I have a class that's level four, five, and six. Sometimes they can take it after AP and they're all in there together. So for my students who've already taken the AP test with this authentic series, they're getting so much out of it and they're learning and they're making all sorts of connections. But so are my students in level four. And we know with the pandemic, sometimes the level four right now, they could be like novice high still, right? Um, hopefully they're moving up into the intermediate, but it's just automatic differentiation. Um, number six, there's so much to talk about. So you can come, they can compare themselves. Um, they can say what they would do or wouldn't do. They can make predictions, which also, if we look at that, right, we have some grammar <laughs> embedded in there. can slip that in. Uh, number seven, they're real and they're fun and, they, and they're enjoyable. So in um, high school, I have a son who's a junior now, and we all can remember high school. And we know that um, some classes can be not really <laughs> real, fun, or enjoyable. We're so lucky as language teachers because we can bring in the real world music and series and um, movies. And then number eight, I love this. Um, this is from Taliban from 2007, wrote this learning vocabulary through authentic video and subtitles. And he talks about the combination of the sounds that they're hearing, the images that they're seeing. And then with this, they're also seeing text because we have the subtitles in, in Spanish. So that I call that the triple connection. I love that. So which, uh, which show to which series to use? So Go, we had to Manera. I had always used um, Gran Hotel and El Internado before, and I still use Gran Hotel. But as I said, the input, I always show with um, Spanish subtitles, not English subtitles. And students are sometimes frustrated by that, but once they realize that they'll watch a segment and then they'll do an activity, and then they get what happens, then they're okay. So they're not fully understanding what's happening, but that's okay. So um, Go, I love, again, it's so appropriate, which is wonderful. There's nothing, well, in my opinion, everybody has a different you know, spectrum of what's appropriate, but there's no murder, there's no swearing, and there's no sex. So that's great. <laughs> I don't have to skip any parts. I'm not nervous. Like, oh my goodness, am I going to skip that or pause it on the wrong part. So that's one of the reasons I loved it. And I always did in the past just readings that students would do, but I'm going to show you here. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things we can do. So these are in all levels of Nuestra Historia, which is great. There are two versions. There are novice versions and intermediate versions. And I believe level three has the intermediate. So level three and up has the intermediate. And I'll show you the difference as we move forward. So when could you do this? In Spanish three first semester, I did it every Friday. And we have 85 minute classes and we would just spend the day on go, which was great. Every Friday we'd pause whatever unit we're in and we would just do it on Fridays. And I, I'm still doing that with my other show now. Students come in, they're relaxed. They think that it's like a really easy day, but I'm like, well, you guys are reading authentic Spanish, you're engaged, you're doing all sorts of activities. So it's great. I've also, for my, um, for my one of my classes now, I give them the option of Tare Semanal. So weekly homework, they have a whole bunch of things they can do and they can just do go. I have them watch three, um, three segments. It, you could have it as just a homework option or if you teach AP, it could be great to do after the AP exam. For me, I have like six weeks after the AP exam with students. They think we're done. No, we're not done. So I have to try to keep them engaged. Or if you have a, you know, kind of a testing day where things are off or a sub day, it's great for a sub day. So there are 10 episodes. The first 10 episodes of Go, Viva Tu Manera, are in the, um, are in the, 
the books, the online books. And then within each episode, there's six to seven activities. Oh, one thing I should say, the series is it's set in Argentina and it's at a high school that um, specializes in dance and, and music. So there's some students who are really into dance and music, but then there's also a really good basketball team. It's super corny. It is really cheesy. And it's just kind of a ridiculous series that students love to hate. So that's, I think our expectations would be, well, you know, it's always keep the expectations low. So it's not that good. You guys might not really like it, but it's something we're going to do. And then they kind of grow to like it, which is, <laughs> which has worked well for me. So let's see. So how, so what, this is how I, this is how I do it. And this is how it's set up in Nuestra Historia. So they watch short clips. We watch when we do it in class, we watch them together and they're with Spanish subtitles. That's the only option. So Erin, um, who was the lead on this said, do we want Spanish or English subtitles? We can only get one. And Elisa and I said, just Spanish. Because if it's in English, they're not getting as much out of it. And then the activities after are like, why are we doing this? I already know what happened. But because the subtitles are in Spanish, they didn't get everything that happened. And when they do the activities, they'll say, oh, that's what happened. OK, I understand now. And we also remind students the purpose is to acquire the language. It's not to just hang out and watch a show with English subtitles and go slowly. So I pause a lot and discuss. Sometimes they get frustrated with that. But I think, again, if we just tell them it's class, I'm going to pause, you need to get over it, we're watching a show, then they'll be okay. And then um, input driven activities. And then again, you can personalize and you can you can discuss all things, all sorts of things you can do. So again, just a reminder that that input and language acquisition does not come from what they watch, it comes from what the teacher and the students, not just the teacher, but what the students do uh, before, during and after. So the input we kind of call them input-driven activities that are in Voces are, um, can I, let's just see, can you see my screen here still that I'm on the Voces page? Okay, great. So looking at episode one, you can see there's, it's divided up into six different parts and there's part one, so I don't, I just, just wanna show this piece just in case people haven't seen it before. The segments are like six to, or they could be anywhere from five to eight minutes long. So they're short chunks. And then below them are activities that students would do. So it's a nice small chunk. Now, when we did the activities in, in class for a semester with Spanish three, we did a variety of things. If students are doing them outside of class, it's so great because they're just online and they're auto graded. So it's so easy for me to check. Students just have to say, oh, I did that for weekly homework and it's easy and it's auto graded. And I love that both days you can set it up so that they have three attempts so they can redo it and get a hundred. I don't get a hundred, you just did it three times. That's great. Uh, you could also print out all the activities and then they could do them on paper. You could do them together projecting, but the other thing you can do with these activities that I'm about to show is you could do um, the marker game, which is, does anybody know this game? It's like, a, um, and I could just, you could just say yes or no in the chat. It's like uh, called grab it. Has anyone done, done that with true or false? Okay, so we don't know the marker game, I can quickly. Oh, some people have, okay, oh, Alan's here, hey, Alan. Okay, I'll just quickly explain, <laughs> explain the marker game, which is really fun. So one of the activities is, oh, I'm just, okay, I'm gonna stop reading the chat. Mauro, save that. If you could save your comment for later, we can talk about that. Um, okay, so the marker game is true or false. So again, this is all, all these activities are online. They're already created. They're not just an intermediate. It's so great that there are, this is like my dream that I wish I had had and now I have it. <laughs> Uh, so for true and false, you could take those statements after you watch the segment and you say a sentence and the students are in pairs with a marker or whatever, anything in between them. And if the sentence is true, they have to grab the marker and then they get a point. If they grab the marker and it's false, they lose two points. And it doesn't even matter about the points, but they just love that competition of grabbing the marker. Really simple game, but if you want to get them off the computer, that's an input activity that you could do where you're saying the sentences are already created, you already have them, and you're just playing at, at, 
a game. You could also take any of the activities and make them listening activities. So you're saying you're giving them audio input, but it's comprehensified. It's not, or it's comprehensible. It's not the language that they're seeing for the subtitles. So you could do dictations. Um, you could do like true false dictations. You could do questions and answers. Uh, you could also do slap it. <laughs> so if you have, um, I used to, I, or I, I like to have students write on the desks with whiteboards. They erase, our desks are nice, they erase really easily. And they like to do that too. Um, with whiteboard, excuse me, with whiteboard markers. So you could write down four characters, names, and then the activity that we have in, in um, OSIS is like who said it, who did it. So the teacher says it. Again, it's a comprehensible language and the students just have to hit the character. It's just having them move and having them off the computers. Could be yell it, you say something and they just yell out the person's name, kind of chaotic. So it depends on your noise level of tolerance. All of these could be whiteboard activities where they have little whiteboards and they're writing the answer. Uh, you could have them do partner activities where you take the sentences and you give half the sentences to one partner, half the other, and then they're saying the sentences depending on your level, lower level, level one, maybe you don't want them because they can't really speak yet, or, or maybe you want to have them practice speaking. You could also do quick grid bingo. That's a Martina Beck's um, idea, and that students really like that. It's they make a three by three grid. They write some answers, you project the answers, they write the answers, and then you say a question and they cross it off. So those, I love that these activities can be just, on, and sometimes some Fridays, my students would say, we'll just do them online, Mrs. Jacobs. And they would do it together and just do it all. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, and they really like that, especially being able to take to do it multiple times to get a hundred. So let's take a look. Oh, this is something Mara, I think mentioned. There are pre, before starting the series, it's really good to introduce the location and the characters. It's, I found that to be really, really helpful for them. So the antes de mirar, there's part A and part B, and then the empareja, all the characters. And they're really, really good for level one because, and I've used this with level one, those activities actually I developed for my level one class because they're, they're giving physical traits, they're giving some basic ad, um, adjectives, and about personality. And then there's also family vocabulary in there. It's, it's like this typical Spanish one vocab is just there. So if you look at those activities, they're really basic, but they, um, they're they great to get, to get started. So thank you, Mara, I did have that in here. So I'm just going to show you some of the activities. So this would be one, or this is for episode one. Um, part one, this is the novice one. So you can see it's really basic. Students have to type in the word. I will say they dislike typing in the word a lot. They wish there was a drop down menu. I asked Erin Aaron about this and she said for some reason they can't do it. So this is their least favorite activity I found. <laughs> so it's just really a basic summary of what happened. So you can, you could do this together as you're saying it and they're filling it in. So let's look at the difference between the intermediate. So let's just go back up. So this is the novice again. Hay un concierto en un parque. Una chica canta. It gives these little um, emojis to help them. La chica es mía. You can see the sentences are really short. Right? Mía canta una canción que se llama, just feel it. It's one of the worst songs. <laughs> La canción es en inglés y español. So that's the novice version. Really simple. And then the... Intermediate version, you could see in El Parque hay uh, un concierto. So there's three choices instead of two. And then it's giving more advanced vocabulary. So al aire libre, mía canta con su banda y hay muchas personas que uh, ven el concierto. La última canción que canta eh, se llama Just Feel It. En el estribillo de la canción es online hey, online hey, online hey. So you can see that difference between the, the novice and the intermediate but they're basically the same. You can also see in the intermediate here um, using some more advanced grammar. So ha dicho, le ha engañado, um, rechazó, some great vocabulary in there. So that's one type of activity that is for each episode. Another one is just basic true or false. So on the left here is the novice and then the intermediate. So 
you can see the difference here, very simple, right? Like they're using lots of using high frequency verbs, right? So we have llega, ve, dice, camina, piensa. This is a great one for those of you who know Lupe. Lupe camina por la escuela, piensa que es la reina de la escuela. Uh, and then over here on the, um, on the intermediate, there's different verb tenses. So discutieron instead of hablar, le dijo. So this you could use for um, grab it for true or false. And then another one is just questions and answers. So again, this is all input, right? They're not producing any language, it's just input. So they are definitely acquiring the language here as they're doing these. So you can see, um, como es la escuela moderna y bonita. So in the novice, there's lots of cognates and it's really simple. So, and then I, you can't see it here, but and they have, um, what is it? I think it's called like dictogloss where they can hover over something and it gives them the meaning. There's a lot more of that if we need to give them uh, something in the novice. And then over here again, you could see much more um, in depth vocab and some of the vocabulary is vocabulary that they see in the show. So in Sayyad to rehearse, that's in the show. And then this one, let me back up. So this, the questions and answers, if you didn't want to do it online, you could do that quick grid bingo, or you could just do question and answer where you're saying the question and they're writing the answer, but a lot of different things you could do with these already created activities. This one is who said it or who did it? So if we look at the intermediate, I really like these because they're quotes they're things that they're actually that they actually said so they're quotes from the from what they just saw so they're authentic but over here in the novice they are we've simplified it so we really just said like uh let's say they say dicen que hay una reunión para el equipo de basquetbol y van a las audiciones but over here um it's, it's kind of like a little bit simplified some of these. And then also you can see quería que su novia hablara. So they're getting that more advanced vocabulary, uh, excuse me, well, vocabulary and grammar. And then this one, I, 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 it's, it's interesting to hear which one students like. So I can tell you, let me just back up a little bit here. They don't like that one. <laughs> they really moan a lot when they see that fill in. True and false, they like. This one they like, but it's harder. So sometimes when things take them a little bit longer and they have to think a little bit more, they don't <laughs> like it as much. But I will say we chunked it into like six questions, six answers. Uh, this one they like, and I really like this one too, the um, who said it, who did it. And we even had who would say it, who would do it as well. I think I bet should come up in a minute. Then we took screenshots and they have to read the, um, the sentence, so Juanma está muy enojado, and then they have to find it, so there he is right there, that's Juanma, he's very mad. Uh, so then they have to just match those. And again, the intermediate, it has the same pictures, you can see, yeah, they're all the same pictures, or almost all the same, but the, uh, the sentences are much more advanced for intermediates. And there is quite a big jump, right? If you think about students going from here one day to this, there's gotta be something in between, right? And that would happen in our other, in our stories that we're using or novels or everything else. In our Spanish three honors class, I, I taught the Spanish three non-honors, the regular CTP and Elisa, the woman, the other woman, the woman who developed the novice activities, she um, in level three honors, she was still using the novice. And then she gave some of them the opportunity to try out the intermediate and some of them did and it would just take them longer, but they were ready for it about two thirds of the way through. And they're also, if we think about it, you know, it's the pandemic um, three honors. So they're maybe a little bit behind where they would normally be. I'd be curious to see if next year in level three, she can start on these a little bit earlier. Uh, oh, this is another quien lo dijo. So who said it? And you can see these are the authentic quotes from the intermediates, but then the novice, we kind of adapted them or give them some words. So these are actually almost all, almost all the same, except for that first one. Okay, um, before we get to questions, I'll just 
jump in on uh, jump to a couple more things um, on my blog. If if you were to go to my blog, which is um, just drop it in the chat. Um, so it's comprehensive finding extending authentic resources. If you go there and you just search go we to Manera, I have all sorts of things here. So going out, so I will say this is, is amazing. All those things in there, you don't have to go out, but you can go out and there's all sorts of other things. Um, and one of them being like the Mochila Challenge. And um, we'd hope to get some of these into, into Boses, but we just haven't yet. Um, so there's lots of other things that you can do that students would pr probably really like make ed puzzles and and students really like YouTube and they like, you know, obviously, but they like learning more about the characters. They follow them on Instagram. Um, they share all sorts of interesting things, which I always get a kick out of. And it's one of our one of our standards is using the language for enjoyment and enrichment beyond the classroom setting. Like I love that that's one of our standards and that community standard. So that's what we can get them to do. And then they also, they could watch in both this, it is on Netflix. So they have, if they have it on Netflix, they can watch it on Netflix at home. Hopefully they I tell them don't watch ahead, but some of them do, but I just say, don't ruin it for us. But that's the one thing why this is so great. Some teachers can't use Netflix in their school, but it's all here. It's so, this is, I don't know how many people are using it, but it is so great, it's so easy because it's just here. And if you have it for Homework students don't have to have a Netflix account. It's just all embedded in this site. It's just so, so wonderful. Okay, so does anyone have any questions? I'll take a look at the at the chat here and all see. Right. I grabbed a couple of questions, Kara, as I was going okay. along. Um, so we'll get to these and then if people have questions afterwards, feel free to chime in. Um, so a couple of questions related to activities. Rosa asks, do you recommend showing both A and B activities? And I think that's related to the pre-watching antes de mirar activities, um, or just one. So do you, do you normally do both of those, Kara, or how do you handle that? I have done both of them, yes. So okay. let's see, yes. And I think, um, yes, I've done both of them. And I like this because it has the audio. So this has all the characters. It is a lot, so I would divide that up. This, this is pretty long, right? You would probably want to divide that up into little manageable chunks the intro. So my, um, I think actually we both did it, Elisa and I, my colleague, we kind of spent the, before we started it, we did a little bit every day kind of introducing it because the, it, the introduction part, it, it's worth it, but it just takes a little while. So the part B is just more characters. So part in this part A is the school and characters and part B is more characters. Then this is kind of like a wrap up pairing them up. So yes, I would do, I would do both of those. Awesome. Um, so Karina had a question about, would you do these activities with multiple levels? For example, Spanish one and Spanish two, or just choose one level and use it then? Um, I think the, the activities do, the activities change according to the levels, correct? Or correct me if I'm yeah. wrong there. Okay. Yes. So level one, this is what we, we had kind of talked about doing. Um, my colleague and I, let me just see. I think we got up to, I can't remember. I think we got into episode eight. So because it take, it's slow, it's slow going. Mm -hmm. So we thought about dividing it up. And I, I think it would be, you know, you have to work with your, your colleagues or if you're alone, you could do it, do it yourself, but doing five in one level and five in another level. So we had talked about maybe next year at the end of second part of Spanish two, starting it with the novice and then continuing. You just have to make sure they don't like to rewatch things and re redo activities, but I definitely think this could be something you, you split up like five episodes in one level and five in the next level. I think it's a way that students, I'm so excited um, in our program, we're using more of this now. It used to be just me, but I have two new teachers and they're using a lot of this. And we have 48 kids signed up for Spanish four and five, which is huge for us. And I really think that this type of stuff is bringing kids back every Friday doing this. So I would definitely use it in different levels. Okay. Very cool. Um, Ellen asked a question that is, I think it's I think it's distinct from what Karina was getting at. Ellen asks, wondering how you handle this series across levels. Do you repeat the series each year as they move through all the levels of your school's curriculum? Does one teacher get to claim the series? Wondering how that works. Yeah, so, that, so that, that's a great question. It's kind of where I was just talking about a little bit. So we 
have to, in level one, um, the teacher, Lisa, who developed these activities, she uses extra, which is like a YouTube series. In level two right now, we don't have anything. And then level, this is a level three thing for us. And then if there's leftover, I might continue it next year in level four, but I'm hoping again to do it in two and three. I would not repeat it. I would talk to the teachers and either divide it up or, or find it, figure out where are you losing the most kids? Is it from two to three? The kids are like, I don't want to do this anymore. Maybe put it in two <laughs> and then you'll keep them. They'll come back. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I think that that clears it up. Um, Amber, let me see. I'm going back here a little bit. Uh, Amber asks, besides stopping and explaining what happened, what's happening in the show, what type of input do you give to students to understand the plot and what is happening? Um, any insight there? Yep. So um, I would, again, pause it. But the, the tricky thing is, is that they will, after they do those activities, the purpose of those activities is to explain what happened in the, in the show. So that's how they would get they would understand the plot. Like I'm seeing it now and actually my students kind of, or I maybe had the revelation, but they were like, oh, that's why that was happening. I said, hey, or I explained to the students explicitly, hey, when we watch, we're not getting it all, but when you do the activities, you're getting it, right? And I said, yeah. I said, okay, that's why we're doing the activities. And that's why if you show something with English subtitles, there wouldn't be a point. There would be a point, but it would be more for learning. But now they see the one of the points of the activities is to understand what just happened. So using those activities and then explaining things, and I do use English sometimes if they're still just confused. I think also I pause sometimes when I know that there's a subtitle that they understand and we'll just translate it together. If it's a key point, like there are some key things they have to understand. So I would use some English sometimes then. Awesome. Um, there, someone had asked in the chat if more seasons will, or more episodes will be added and if the entire series is available on Voces. Um, I understand that there is there are two seasons that have been released on Netflix, um, but the third one was canceled. So, you know, with a grain of salt, you can take that one. Um, okay. And then okay. on, I don't think there are plans to add more. Not that I'm not that I'm aware of. 10, the yeah. list, list there is a significant amount. Can I, Spencer, I just saw one question can I, that Alan asked. Can I just answer yeah. that? So Alan said, can you imagine this as a whole unit day after day after day, or is it better as a Friday only thing? I think to start it, as I was saying the intro, it might be, and Lisa does, I think she did a whole week of it together. So to start it, maybe do several days and then transition to just Fridays is what, what works for me, I have found. They love coming in on Fridays and they have homework on Thursday. It's not done until Monday, but they just love that Friday. They come in, it's really relaxed. Um, so that's worked best for me, but I think you could, you could do it however you want, but 10 episodes, it might be too much for, it would be weeks and weeks. It might be too much go. Um, okay. I will, uh, so we're still not quite at time. We have a little bit more time. I'll ask you a couple of questions. If anyone else has any further questions, feel free to chop them in the chat or to, um, to chime in here. Um, one thing that, again, kind of uh, going back to what I mentioned before we got started, Kara, um, something that stood out to me is, you know, the, the prevalence of the Rio plate accent with the Vos and, and, and Voseo. And then also, you know, there are just kind of like dialects from all over. Um, do students, do students, okay, well, first off, two questions, I guess, um, because when I learned Spanish in high school, Vos was never taught, at least in, in my, in my uh, context. Um, so do you teach Vos like independently outside of this uh, show? And if not, like, how do students react to hearing that for the first time and be like, what? I thought it was two eres, you know? Or they think it's vosotros, <laughs> like, it's not vosotros. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm like, no, it's really not. So um, I think it's a great discussion for students to talk about, bring, pull up a map. I'm pretty sure there's a map somewhere in Voces that has the use of vos in it. So we bet you could just Google it too. Like, where is it used? Argentina, Uruguay? It's used all over Central America. It's used. Yeah. I, th I would be curious to know population-wise, but it has to be used more than vosotros. But vosotros is everywhere, right? It's in textbooks, and why is that? And I have students, it just came up recently, and I have students who are asking about it. I said, well, why, what do you think? And they said, Eurocentrism. So they're taking world history with my good friend who's you know talking about it. it's everywhere. So that was a great lesson for them. And then I do show them the, how it works, like vosos and vos tenés. And it's interesting in the subtitles on, on Netflix anyways, I can't remember. If on both says sometimes they actually they say like both tenes, but 
but they say TMS, the, the subtitle says yeah. TMS, which is yeah. also like, why, why are they doing that? Um, so talking about that, that's a great jumping off point. And then they can just, it's a great way to say, to talk about variations of English and, but we can all understand each other and it's not right or wrong, it's just different. So that's another thing that I love Spencer, I'm glad you brought that back up. Awesome, yeah, I think that's, I think that's super interesting. And I, I love uh, hearing that the students are adapting to, to talking about both. Um, let's see here. Oh, can uh, I, can I, oh, I have, an, go ahead. I have yes, another please. question I want to ask. Well, first, hi, Martha, and hi, Margo. <laughs> I'm recognizing names here. Um, so Martha just said that she recently read that 60% of the people in Latin America use both. Oh, and it was just accepted by the Real Academia. That's wild that it was wow. just accepted. But that's a lot of people. Um, and there's even different variations, I think, amongst amongst how they use it. So that's really interesting. Thank you for that. That would be, be a little note, good note to put in somewhere in both ways. Um, Margo was wondering if I give them any type of assessment. That's such a good question, Margo. And I've gone back and forth on that. And I've gotten feedback from students who are like, don't assess on it. Just let us learn what we're learning. We're all learning different things. And it's so cheesy. But it was at the end of the course. And that stuck with me. It was, uh, it was Pete Marshall. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's so good. But I do offer it on the final exam. It is one of the, the choices that they have if we do like a caja de identidad or so they can incorporate it if they want. But I actually, I've gone back and forth on that, but right now I'm not, I'm not doing assessments on it. So I don't know, that's where, that's where I kind of fall on that. Um, let's see, Spencer, did you see any other questions or I'm just kind of- uh, Marissa asked if you had ever used uh, Soy Luna episodes, the Disney Plus show, she says, and it's set in Buenos Aires as well. Um, oh, I haven't. No, I should check that out. And I, and now I'm like, um, I, there's so many good shows out there, but to make all the activities, oh, so much work. <laughs> so it's nice that they're all just done in here. Um, but I'll have to check that one out because maybe for AP, I don't need as many activities and they've, some of them I've already seen this. Um, I see another question from Amber. Is there a place where shared teacher made resources can be found for the show outside of the activities that are included in the program? No, but if you search online, I think there's quite a bit out there. There's a, there's a Facebook group and there's tons of stuff on there. And um, I'm not sure if they're all input driven. They're more like students are producing things. Um, but there's so many good ideas. Even with these activities, it'd be great if there were a place where teachers could share what they're doing with these activities that are already created. Yeah, Alan, there is a Facebook group just for Go. I think you were typing like Go, we got to Manera and Facebook, it'll, it'll come up. <laughs> There's a lot of groups out there. And Stephanie, I haven't used any of the other challenges beside the Mochila one. Okay, just still scrolling through. Does anyone have any other? Not seeing any of those. Let's see. Okay, I think we got we got all the questions. Awesome. Uh, any any final thoughts here, uh, Kara? Any last questions? Um, I don't think I have any last 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 thoughts. Just thank you to everyone that came and listened on a on a Wednesday night at six thirty. Um, it's great as we're nearing the end of the the end of the school year well, in the Northeast, we still have a long time to go, but this is such a nice option. It's just so easy. Elisa and I, we worked hard on this over the summer and then every Friday, we're like, oh, this is such a great day. It's so relaxing. It's relaxing and it's easy for us as a teacher, but the students are getting great input and language and it's authentic and it's fun. And it's just, it's really nice on Fridays. That's the other reason I do it on Fridays. I like easy Fridays. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kara, for coming to share uh, your thoughts on Go. Thank you to all everyone that showed up uh, tonight to check out another edition of our weekly Wednesday webinar. Don't forget, we'll be back next week with another one. Um, for those of you who are not already subscribed to Voces, but you like what you heard and you'd like to check out Voces and get access to these awesome materials that Kara helped us uh, design, go to VocesDigital.com and sign up for a free trial um, for 10 days, no credit card required, um, and you can start using Go in your class this week. Uh, thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Kara, and have a good night. All right. Thank you. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.